Everybody says sex before marriage is a sin, right? Mm -hmm. Show me one verse that says that. God doesn't care about your sin anymore. The biggest lie you are ever told mm -hmm. <laughs> is that if it doesn't line up with scripture, it's not from God. Mm. It would be hard to listen to this man, agree with this man, and then for anyone else to take you seriously as a Christian. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. If you are, you're an immature Christian. Explicitly say certain things are sins, but it implies based on the morals of Judeo-Christian beliefs or the morals, godly morals, that these things are not a good thing to do but not necessarily sin, but it can lead you into a sinful path. Like an example, everybody says sex before marriage is a sin, right? Mm -hmm. Show me one verse that says that. There is no verse that says that. There is no explicit verse that says that. I, you know me, I'll tell you the real. I'm not going to hide. I'm not going. I'll tell you the truth. Yeah. There's no verse that explicitly says that. So, what he, so he's saying that sex before marriage, fornication, is not explicitly called a sin. Maybe it implies that. If you believe that, then you don't know your scriptures. But for him to say so tells you really where his heart is. So before we even look at other things that he says, we're going to look at some other things that he says. If you don't see that this man is one deceived and deceiving, that this man is a false teacher, if this man is trying to lead people straight, then, then the only the only rational way of looking at you would be that you are one, not a believer yourself, you two are deceived, or it could be that you are just simply immature. In which case, I would pray that you would leave this person, find some mature person to help you through the scriptures, just start reading the Bible for yourself and you will see a basic understanding of the scriptures will lead you to believe that what he just said is incorrect. Now let's go to the scriptures. The word that's used in the Bible to describe fornication, it's all wrapped in one word and we're going to even see how it even certainly means sex before marriage. But before we go there, let's look at the actual word. The word is in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, we'll see this word show up. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. Now, you would say, well, okay, there it is, the word fornicators. Now, the word fornicators, the reason why it's put that way is because we understand what it means. It comes from the word pornea, which means to be evil or, or to be sexually immoral. Now, that can cover a lot of different things. So the person who's sexually immoral, uh, it also will even deal with homosexuality, although there are words that specifically lead, that point to homosexuality. So this word is properly understood and is fine to be translated as fornication. Now, to prove this point, let's go, let's say in 1 Corinthians and go to chapter 7, verse 2. And so he's speaking about how we should be, uh, whether married or unmarried, single and so forth. He says, but because of immoralities, each man is to have his own wife and each woman is to have her own husband. Well, what immoralities? What is this word? The word that's used there is the word porneia again. And so, so in order to stop an onslaught or the desire or the attempt of fornication because of fornication, we can put that there, each man is to have his own wife and each woman is to have her own husband. And so the goal is to make sure this doesn't happen. Well, what do we think he's talking about? Clearly, he's speaking about fornication. The problem is what he's doing is clearly evil, clearly wicked. Let's go to Romans 1. Paul is talking about these people who have these unnatural uses and so forth, but he also brings in the misuse of a body as well, not just homosexuality, but also uh, fornication and, and so forth. Look what he says in Romans 1, 28. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do the things which are not proper, being filled with all, now he's going to go down the list, all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. They are gossips. Now, let's stop there. Where is the word for fornication or the word porneia? Here it is, this word wicked. So here we see it here. Now notice what he says about those people. This word porneia is right there. But if we drop down a little further, look what he says they do. And, and we'll see that this is exactly what 
Lovey is doing himself. Drop down. He says in verse 32, and although they know the ordinance of God, so although Lovey knows that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they do not do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. And so what is he doing? He is giving people approval to do those things because why? They can come back and say, well, it's not really, it's not technically a sin. The Bible doesn't explicitly say so. So now he says, show him one verse that says that we've shown him. Now, he's not going to recant. If anyone were to show him this, he would still say, no, that's what it really says. And that's fine. We're not trying to take the immoral person and get them to see because, again, a person convinced against his will is still not convinced. And a person who is actively trying to deceive people in various ways, such as him, he's not going to want to listen, nor does he care to listen, because it is going to stop what I would think is his gravy train. Now, we've covered a lot of other things about this man. This is why he is one of the worst people to ever listen to and, and maybe one of the most dangerous people because he's got his supporters who, if you pull out something, if you show him where he's wrong, they still don't care. This is the man who said that if anyone says that Adam named the animals, that person is a liar. Listen to me. Anyone who tells you Adam named animals, he lied to you. Adam never named a single animal. The Bible says the opposite. It says that when God sent animals to Adam, he watched to see what he would call them, not what he would name them. And then we simply showed him or showed the audience that it's wrong, that he was wrong. And what people do, his followers, they still say, no, you're you're wrong. You're going after this man. How dare you? How dare you judge him? Of course, they're, they're judging back because someone has touched someone that they follow and maybe idolize. But let's get to the crux of it. This is a man who does not hold the scriptures in high regard, which is a, a glaring red light. Now, I caught, I saw this on some other platform, and so you all forgive the way that it, that it comes across, the way it looks, but still, you'll see the point. You'll understand why it doesn't matter where we see this at, but that we see this. Listen to what he says about the scriptures. I'm going to make a statement that some people are not going to like, but I'm going to tell you the truth. That's all right. Say it, say it. The biggest lie you are ever told Mm. <laughs> is that if it doesn't line up with scripture it's not from God mm. wow. that is the biggest lie you're ever told yeah. Teach us. if something is a secret it means it's not in here yeah. wow. 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 no somebody wow. didn't hear what I said okay I know some religious people won't like what that's I'm good. saying that's good though that's good <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it one more time. The secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him. Mm -hmm. So what Abraham wrote is not a secret. Wow. It's Amen. a mystery. Wow. Amen. Do you think he told you everything? No. 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 Now, the Bible is clear about teaching what comports or what conforms with sound doctrine. As a matter of fact, it even talks about how we need to have sound doctrine so that we can have a pattern of how we ought to live. And so if he says it doesn't line up with scripture, well, then what should it line up with? With your own feelings? And that's really what it is. He wants to be the one that's going to tell you that it is okay or what something means. He's always got some sort of new interpretation. This is what it means. It means that. That means this. That means that. This is the guy that says Peter is the doorway. This is the guy, and we're going to see what he says about prayer. He is so far off. If you're still listening to this person, even now, after this, you're going to be the person that God is going to deal with as well. Now, aside from the people that are sitting there clapping and feeling like they heard something profound, oh, wow, and amen, and clapping and so forth, God, again, is going to deal with them. Let's just be clear. But let's go to the passage that he brings up that is without question, without question wrong. One, this shows his level of ignorance. He goes, he, what he's quoting is, he's quoting Psalm 24, I'm sorry, Psalm 25, 14. So let's go ahead and put it on the screen. In Psalm 25, 14, it says, the secret of the Lord is, is for those who fear him. And so he's making this point about secret. However, he doesn't understand what the word means. The, because he sees the word secret, he doesn't get it. The word secret is from this Hebrew word, sod, which means this kind of personal um, counsel. As a matter of fact, even the Greek word that's used in, in the LXX or the Septuagint to describe this word is the strength of the Lord. But what it really is, is this, this counsel, this secret kind of counsel, this intimate counsel, I should say, of the two parties coming together. It's not something that's unknown. He hears the word secret and he thinks 
about when we were in kindergarten and someone said, hey, I've got a secret to tell you and whisper in someone's ear. That's what he's thinking. He is incorrect. The Bible wants us to heed his word or else why give us the word? And notice what he'll do is he'll take the words, the very words in the Bible that he doesn't think that that we really ought to pay attention to as much. And he'll twist them. He'll turn them for his own benefit to give you his insight, his interpretation, which is off. But what kind of a man would do such a thing? Well, remember, we see Satan in the garden doing the very same thing. Did God say in regards to God's word? And then says, that's really not what God's word says. Same thing with him. This is a man who is full of so much pride, who is into himself. Now, you don't have to take my word for him. This man thinks that he is the best thing walking around on the planet right now. Right now, I'm saying it before God. I know myself, especially in this nation. Can nobody cast out demons like me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is true. I am not saying the other people are not casting out demons. They are. They are being used by God. But I know my spiritual level. I know it. Right now, I'm saying it before God. I know myself especially in this nation. Now, let me give you two passages and we'll just be through with this man for the time being. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 12, it says that, therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed that he does not fall. Now, this particular person has gone above and beyond this particular passage. He thinks not that uh, he is secure and that he's godly. No, he just thinks he's the best thing ever. The Bible also tells us this in Galatians 6, 3 it says, for if anyone thinks that he is something when he is nothing, that's him. The Bible says that he deceives himself. This is him. This is him. Now, what you can do with this is whatever you want. You can listen to this man. You can follow this man. You follow this man. I promise you, you will suffer the same fate. This is a man who will take the word of God and twist it. I saw this. I came across this. Someone sent this to me. And so I saw it. And so this is really some, the only example I can find of this. I haven't heard this before, but someone else giving an, an, a reaction to what Lovi is saying. But listen to this. You tell me if you should keep following this person who disregards, obviously we've seen him disregard the word of God and then certain sins. But then he tells us even more so that God doesn't care about your sin. God doesn't care about your sin anymore. pastor told you the opposite I'm telling you the truth everyone has fallen short of the glory of God the work of the Holy Spirit is to perfect us in God so God is busy perfecting sin doesn't mean you are not a child of God when you are in Christ we stumble we don't sin we fall but we don't sin why because when you are in him the law does not exist for you anymore it is only the law of love to go even further to show how heretical this person is, this man tells people that the way out of the flesh, to get out of your flesh, whatever it is that you're dealing with, is not by prayer, but by meditation. The reason why you cannot engage with the spiritual, you are in the flesh. Mm. Yet the way out of the flesh is not prayer, is meditation. Come on. You want your spirit to go farther, but you have not prepped the vessel to be able to go far. You have breaks within meditation. When you worship God, there's a time you get into meditation. Because every prayer, in order for it to enter the spiritual realm, it gets into the place of meditation. Because meditation is the key to the spiritual realm. Well, how bad is that? Well, the Bible is clear. The Bible says, James tells us that if any of you are suffering, whatever it is you're going through, he says to pray. And he also tells us to even call for the elders. And what will they do? Pray. Jesus says that Satan desires to Peter to sift you like wheat. What was Jesus' response? But I've prayed for you. And so prayer is clearly important, but not to him. No, to meditate. And his form of meditation, I promise you, is not what the Bible uh, had in mind for a believer at all. But again, if you want to listen to him, feel free to do so. You're indicating something about your heart, uh, your uh, level of walk with God, or really the lack of it. And so beware, this is a person who is deceived and deceiving others. And I can promise you, God will deal with not only just him, but also others. So beware, find someone that will hold on to the word of God. As a matter of fact, you ought to desire the pure, you ought to desire the word of God as babes desire pure milk. Do that 
and you don't have to worry about someone coming around telling you what the Word of God says. Instead, learn it for yourself. Amen. Amen.